Hello, daughter, D-O-T-T-E-R. My name is Ginger. I am the creator and founder of Otana. I'm so glad you're joining me today to paint through this project. It's perfect for anyone of any level, even if you are just starting and this is your first time painting a dot mandala. Don't get thrown off by the scallop shell. If you don't have a scallop shell, I'll be sharing with you some other options of what you can use as a surface. And if pink isn't your forte, I have some suggestions for how you can easily switch around the pink colors for some others. In today's video, I've made a few improvements based on your suggestions from the last video. Today, you're going to hear this sound when a new step begins. And I hope that will help as you're dotting along to signify you to look up and check out what tool, color, and where to place your dots. If you are enjoying these dot along experiences, you can support me in creating more by liking this video, sharing it with others, and commenting down below. The fun thing that has happened since the first video is seeing all of your dots that are being created from following along with these videos. I am welcoming your dots and am sharing them to a couple of places on Instagram. One is in the stories where they appear for 24 hours and then I am collecting those into one of the highlights called Your Dots. You can see these growing collections of photos. If you go over to Otana World on Instagram, you will be able to see dots painted through these video tutorials from all around the world. I really hope that you will share your dots as well. When you're finished painting your way through today's project, at the end of the video, you will see some options of how you can get your beautiful photograph to me and I in turn will share with others. Okay, everyone, so let's start by going over what you will need for this project. Here I am showing you the different paint colors you will need to follow along. Don't get hung up on getting exactly the shades you see here. Things can change between devices, and so you may be seeing colors that are a little bit off of what I actually used anyhow. Just focus on getting a variety of shades. So for instance, where there are four shades of pink and red, just make sure you've got four different shades yourself. You can actually substitute those pinks and reds for something else if you wish. If pinks and reds aren't your thing, swap those out with four colors of either blue, purple, or green and follow the instructions as you see here and you're going to have a beautiful piece that partners very, very well with the shades of gold, orange, and yellow. Let's talk about the tools that you will need for this project. You will need what I call the set of seven. These are specific sized flat in tools that make dots as well as one stylus. These tools I refer to throughout many of my instructions. All you need to do is put them together once and you're ready for this project and all kinds of other written projects and video projects that I create. I've put together two resources to help you with this. One is a free downloadable written resource guide and the other is a partnering YouTube video. The links for those resources are down below. Let's talk about the dotting surface you need here first. You're going to need something that is at least six inches. I don't want you dotting this project and running out of space. So make sure it's at least six inches and you want it to be white and smooth. I've used a scallop shell. Now you don't have to use that. Other options would be a canvas or even a piece of cardstock can work wonderfully. In this project, I also start with a black circle that is three inches across. Now there's a couple of options around this. You can, first of all, omit this step completely and just dot on a complete white surface. That would be fine. You could also make the three inch circle yourself, or if you would like, you can download my templates with my complete circle set. I have put the link for that down below as well. 
And finally, you'll just need a pencil. If you're going to work with the circle, you're going to need a pencil to do some outlining. Once you've assembled all of your materials, you are ready to dot along. So let's get started. If you're going to use the three inch circle in the center like I did in my piece, the first step is to find your center of your six inch surface, place your three inch circle there, trace it, and then paint it in black. Once you've painted it in black, just let this dry and then you are ready to move on and start dotting. I just have to do one more thing. I'm going to use my template and mark the center of my black area. Now if you don't have one of the templates just use a ruler or any other method to find the approximate center of your black circle or if you're not using a black circle just mark the center of your completely white surface. This is going to mark and show where you're going to put your first dot. All right we're set. We're going to start dotting using that center mark as the position for our middle of our mandala. The structure for today's design is an eight point mandala. Now I've had the realization it's going to be very helpful for folks if I take and make a couple videos just related to what you're seeing here, which is the process for setting up the structure of an eight point mandala. For right now, you can just watch and follow along. And when I have created that video, I will add the link here so that you can check it out and see me break down the process and talk you through exactly what an eight point mandala is and how we go about adding these dots. It's a very specific process as you see here. All right, the process of creating this mandala is going to start to flow now. I will be coming on to speak just a few times as needed. When you hear that bell ding, just take a peek and look at what tool you need, what color we're using, and where I'm positioning the dots.
you're going to see me use what I call the double here. I have created a number of vocabulary words to help communicate different aspects of the process. I'll put the link down below to my vocabulary list where you see photographs and descriptions that outline each one. But you can see here what the double is. Two dots that are the same size, made with the same tool and the same color. They almost touch each other and where they almost touch aligns with the center.
In this step, you're going to see me make two dots without reapplying paint to the tool. So they move outwards from the center in a straight line. Second one's hopefully a little tiny bit smaller than the first one you create. All right, folks, this is a great opportunity to point something out. Usually in every design, there is a spot like this. You'll see I've suggested tool four or five. We're working in between dots that have already been painted. And so you don't want to overlap dots and let paint overlap paint that's already in place. Tool four is working for me here in a number of spots, but as you can see, I, I don't have enough room in some of these zones. So I'm using tool four where I can fit it, and then I'm gonna go back in here and use tool five to fit in the dots where it was a little squishier. No one's gonna tell on me, right? You're not going to tell. Hey, I won't tell on you either if you do the same thing. Now you're going to see the challenge that I've presented myself by working on this scallop shell, which isn't completely smooth. So as I put on these bigger dots, I have to kind of move my tool around and my dots aren't going to be perfectly circular. And you know what? That's okay. The other thing that I am okay with, and I encourage you to be okay with as well, is even though I've been dotting a whole bunch, the circle that was painted first, that black circle, on all eight areas, I'm not reaching the edge of that at exactly the same position. On some sides, there's a little more black showing at this point than other sides of the mandala. I don't worry about those little tiny things. Those are little tiny things and, and I just let them go and I keep on painting.
Okay, I got a little ahead of myself. You're going to see a taper done on two sections. I really wanted to stop and break this down for you and put the step you're seeing right now on first. Do that as one step and then in the next step, do the taper. So this step aligns with the center. Now I will go ahead and do the taper. So on mine, I have to re-dip into the paint about two times in order to get all the way around my big light yellow dots without running out of paint. Play around with that. You may need to, like me, or you may need to re-dip a third time, or you may need less. Just play around and see what you need for it to work for you.
some of these tapers that you're going to see me paint. I'm going to make a little line of dots from the last step towards the center. At some places I fit in four little dots and in some places there's only three. You're probably going to find the same thing, or maybe not. Maybe yours is more consistent than mine. Either way, this is just about filling in the space, and I'm not getting hung up on the fact that in some places, the number of little dots is different than in other places. So this is coming to the end of layer one. Once you're finished this step, I want you to get your dots dry, either by letting them air dry or using a hair dryer to force it dry before you move on.
This step is the end of layer two, and we're going to move into, in the next step, layer three. So you're going to want your dots to be dry, again, either just by letting them air dry or using a hair dryer to speed up the process. Thank you so much for dotting along with me today. I hope you enjoyed this and I'm welcoming you to share your dots with me on Facebook, Instagram, or to use the hashtag Otana.